Hey, hey, just wanted to jump on in here real quick and let you know that the ladies kicking ass happy hours are about to come back. That's right. This November, we'll be starting the local ladies kicking ass happy hours right here in Gilbert, Arizona. So mark your calendars for November 16th from 4 to 7 p.m. And we'll drop more information as we get closer to the date. Can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Ladies Kicking Ass Podcast, where we raise our voices and honor the badass achievements of women in the service industry. Get ready for empowering conversations, inspiring stories, and a whole lot of ass kicking energy. Join us as we redefine what it means to be bold, fearless, and unapologetically YOU, babe. This is your platform, your community, and your source of inspiration. So buckle up, get ready to rock and roll, and let's show this world just how much we can accomplish. Welcome to the Ladies Kicking Ass Podcast. Hi, ladies. Welcome back to another episode of Ladies Kicking Ass. Today, I am so excited because I have a kindred spirit with me today, and this is going to be one hell of a conversation. I know it already. I had to cut her off. I had to said we had to we got to hit record because everybody's going to want to listen to what we're talking about. So my guest today is Kim Hatch. She is a mama from the East Coast who is in the same field that I am. She actually is co-owner with her fiance, and they own a septic company. So this is going to be such a fun conversation. I know. Many Many times when I'm talking about septic business, it kind of like people gloss over or tune out because they don't know what the hell I'm talking about. This lady knows her shit too. So I'm super excited to have this conversation. Kim, thank you so much for being here. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? What is it that you love about your industry and why you love to pump shit every day? Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kim. I am from the East Coast, the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire. I've been here for well, 25 plus years. You know, I've had quite a journey of many different careers. I was a police officer for a little while, had a house cleaning business, went through kind of a yucky divorce and was trying to refine myself. And I did not see this as my path of pumping shit as my, my business, my baby. And literally the logo on our truck says we get shit done because we do met my fiance and he had just gotten his brother into septic inspections because we don't have many septic inspectors around here. And between him being a realtor and my brother-in-law being a septic inspector, he's like, I think we need a new septic business in town. Do you want to quit your job? Put all your faith in me, your boyfriend, (laughs) and I will buy the trucks. I will help you get the training and let's start a shit business. And at first I was really kind of like, Oh God, shit. I don't know. Like I'm not a germaphobe, but it's poo. It's a lot of poo. We went to our first job three summers ago at a campground and we had an older gentleman that was showing me the ropes. He's, he's done septics forever in this valley. I was joking with him and I promise I'm joking. I said, you know, we carry around those big black construction garbage bags to put roots in. I said, I could hide bodies and get away with it. And he, his name is Walter. He's literally 85 years old. And he looked at my now fiance and he goes, oh, she's fine. <laughs> and I was covered in poop and I just, I love it. It's, there are days that it's absolutely exhausting, but I coming into this, I had seen, we tried to buy another business in town and they wanted a lot of money. You know, it wasn't worth what they wanted and they're older gentlemen. And so we ventured out on our own. I got my CDL. I got my septic inspector's license. I worked with old timers to figure out what the fuck I was doing. Cause I had no, I didn't even know how to drive a big truck. This was a whole life-changing experience for me. I said we were going to digitize everything. Nothing was going to be pen and paper. Everything was going to be on computer. There was going to be email reminders. We were going to photograph everything and have notes and iPads for the drivers. I wanted state-of-the-art technology for finding things because as I was reading and learning, yeah, septics are old school, but there is a lot happening in our world that are affecting our septic systems. And so not only did I want to go digital, but And I didn't just want to, I guess they call them water hogs. I don't know if you've ever heard that term. Take the water and leave. And there's a lot of that that happens. I wanted to do a thorough job and not only do the job, but if they have questions afterwards, if they want to know what exactly is going on, if they want to watch what I'm doing, 
I had some kids from Boston, little kids, and I was like, you guys can't flush your Legos. It's going to ruin the septic. So we literally took a little rubber duck, flushed it down the toilet, and they saw it come out the inlet pipe. And those kids giggled so hard. And I want to educate. I want to teach people. I only do septic pumping and inspections, but I've made a lot of great relationships with the contractors in town that do the design work, do the test pits, and then put the septics in. So I can go in and say, yep, I failed it. This person's going to get it done for you and I'll work with them to get it done. So really community-based and not just here to make money. I mean, they call it, you know, liquid gold and all that stuff. It's my baby. This is my business and I'm proud of it. I don't want to be, drive a shitty truck and look like shit. I mean, we joke up here that I'm the pumper princess. I mean, it's, I wear a crown some days just for fun. And I wave to the kids on Main Street in North Conway and I got my horn honking and I have fun with it. And I think that's what it should be. It's so, yeah, it's my baby. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. There's so much to get into with that. So we'll just dive into some of this stuff. I love what you had to say about going in you this is very much a good old boys club very much would you agree oh, the yeah. septic 100%. okay so many times i know for me too i'm the only female owned septic company in the state of arizona i own it a hundred percent and many times people will be like oh so did you and your husband start this business i'm like no i did <laughs> and it's I take great pride in that. And many times I remember when I got into this industry, I was like, I don't want to tell my girlfriends what I do for a living. Like I was a marketing director and now I own a shit company, you know, like it's so crazy. And I love that you own it and you refer to it as your baby. My business, same thing. It's an extension of one of my kids. That first hire is so difficult. Like everything is so crazy because you truly put your heart and soul on the line to be able to create this business. And it really is a representation of who you are. And I love that you say like, I want to educate, I want to do the right thing so that long term, you can build this beautiful reputation in your community. And people will look at you as the go to septic person there. And it is a really awesome industry to be in. So I'd love to jump into how you feel like women affect the home service industry. What do you think they bring to the home service industry? And do you think there's any cons to women being in the home service industry? So I think it's really important. And I think women kind of get looked at like, we can't do it. But we not only help cook dinner, you know, in, in a lot of families, it's still the wife that cooks the dinner. But we are just as smart. And what we don't have in muscle, we have in brains. And I think we're more creative than men sometimes. And, and it, that's not to bash them, but I think our input is so important. And I mean, I'm, I was a police officer for seven years. I took the old boys club of doing it differently. And I put a totally different touch on being a police officer. And I think there's some, I'm taking a humanities class right now. I think there is something to be said for opening the door for women and listening to us a little bit more because we are smart and we are strong. And what we can't lift physically, we mentally figure out how to do it. And we put, you know, I, I play on an ice hockey team and we put the razzle dazzle into the home business. You know what I mean? It's, and I think a lot of females, when you get, I'll take a septic pumper, you know, some of them are gruff and rough and they're covered in poop and dirt. I guess looking at my old self 10 years ago, if he had come to my dorm, but like, Hey, you're backed up. I would have been like, Oh God, I got to get my husband. A woman coming to your door and saying, hey, come here, I want to show you what's going on. They understand it and they're more comfortable with you. And so now they understand the house just as well as the husband. And I just think we we can be rough and tough, but we're soft too. And we can relate better to someone who's not going to be bigger than us and make us feel stupid because we didn't know that our septic backed up or my fiance just came in and I told him that the sink was backed up. I don't want to fix it, <laughs> but he can do it. <laughs> But, you know, I just, I think we have a lot to bring. And honestly, the doors are really close for us. I don't know that there are any other female owned septic businesses in New Hampshire either. And I do have pumpers that won't even acknowledge me at the dump station, won't wave, won't say hi. And some days I think we're a threat because we can do it just as well, if not better and bring more to the table. Yes. 
I agree a thousand percent with you. And I think one of the coolest things about having women in this industry is the softness that it brings to building a company culture. I think this is something in the home service industries that has been rather I point you do type of situation where women bring in a different form of management and leadership. They know that there's a difference between the two things. When you're trying to manage people, you will always fail and somebody's always going to be pissed because you can't manage people. You can manage responsibilities. You cannot manage people. So it truly is like hiring for attitude and taking a different approach to hiring and what you put up with, with the shit that comes from some of these rough and tough guys, you know, like we just let somebody go with my business that could he do the job? Hell yeah, he could do the job, but he was an asshole and I don't want him working on my team. Because my ladies in the office don't even want to fucking talk to him because he's such a dick on the phone all the time. Like, that doesn't work for me. And it sucks because now my husband's back on the pump truck and we're training more new people. But we are going to keep going until we get the team back in place that we want to have because that attitude is everything. And I think that's where many times things will get overlooked. Are you part of the pumper page on Facebook? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. So this is like, this is my entertainment is to read the comments that happen on this thing because a vast majority of the people that are on there are men. But they will say stuff like, you know, I'm curious, what are you guys doing for Christmas bonuses? Or I'm curious, what do you guys do for like an incentive for your guys? And like some of these guys are like, I give them a fucking shovel. That's all they need. You know, like some people are like, I provide water. I'm like, really? That's all you're doing to make people feel special and want to be a part of your team is you provide them water. <laughs> like, it's amazing to me, like what is just common sense. Like I take care of people that work on my team. Like I take care of my own kids and my own family. They're an extension of who I am because they're part of literally something that we've created. So I'd love to hear like, what's your input and in how do you take, I know you have an employee now, how do you make him feel special and what kind of culture do you want to create at your business? You know, it, I want him to have fun. Like I have fun. I am, I am a loud personality. And he puts up with me, which is, is huge. But, you know, at Christmas last year, we just gave him a monetary bonus. It was first year. We gave him a good bonus. But, like, this year, he's even more a part of the family because he's full time. The fridge is always open for a drink. For his birthday, he was saying his neck and his back was really hurting. So I got him a massage. The other day, we did a massive association. We've done it for the first time. He just bought a brand new Harley Davidson. With his son, they both got brand new Harleys. It was a beautiful day, which we haven't had many here in New England. And um, he's like, God, Finn really wants to go for a ride. I said, Jeff, you know what? If you can just help me get this last load on, we had the utility truck. I'm like, I'll take the pump truck and dump it, go home so you can get some sunlight in and go ride with Finn for the night. I try to make sure he gets a couple Fridays off in the summer because, you know, for summer's crazy busy here. Winter, we're slow. I want him to enjoy his family. I want him to go do things. This job can burn you out quickly. If he needs a day, I want him to have a day, you know, and he's great that I can have a conversation with him. And he's like, you know, Kim, next week, can we just kind of, can we go low? I, I'm just, I'm tired. I've got some family stuff going on. Yeah, Jeff, let's do it. I don't want to burn him out. I love him. He works incredibly well. He works incredibly hard. He does as I ask. If I can't be on the job, he takes the photos. He takes the location for me. Make sure, and he's great with customers because like last year, I spent the whole year riding with him and training him. I know and I feel comfortable and I trust him. And I think that's huge for him that I trust him to go out with our brand new septic truck that we just bought in February. That's his truck. Go drive the brand new truck. Do it, Jeff. You know, so I don't ever want him to feel that he can't ask for something. Yeah, he's part of the family and it's, he's not my employee by no means. He, he is part of the family. We went out to the National Wastewater Conference last year to pick up our truck in Indianapolis. Like, Jeff, you want to come with us? <laughs> just want to come? We paid for his ticket. We paid for his hotel room because it's stuff he gets to learn from and see. So I expect a lot out of him, but I want him to expect a lot out of me. It's, it's not just him out there working. I want, it's, it's like that Egyptian photo. I don't know where I've seen it before. You've got the Egyptian whipping the whip and making their men go. I want to be right there in the front pulling that rock with them. And I want him to expect that from me. So yeah, I praise Jeff. He's incredible. And I, if I find another one, it will be amazing. Yeah, it's amazing when you get that good one that you're like, oh, you've got a bar, you've got a bar. I, ha I have a Jeff, but his name is Keith. 
<laughs> and it is, it is really, truly something special. And it is something special for them too, to be a part of what it is that you're building. Like one of my biggest philosophies at my team, and I tell everybody this as I refer to it as my team. I don't ever really refer to it as this is my business or my company because my company wouldn't exist without the people that are in it because those people have helped me grow this company. So it really is one of those things where when my guys go out or the girls in the office are on the phone and people say, oh, wow, you know a lot about that. You must be the owner. And they're like, no. That is the biggest compliment in the world to me. And I think for like the old school guys, it was almost like, I don't want to teach them all my tricks or tell them all my stuff because they might go out on their own and take it away from me. And I'm like, I want to build a place so strong. Nobody knows who the hell the owner is here. And that is the best way to grow. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I went to, Jeff was pumping and I went and did the riser after he dug it up and they're like, he is incredible. We thought he was the owner. And I'm like, perfect, perfect. He knows his stuff. He, he, he did awesome. And yeah, you, you got to cherish your, your employees, your teammates, your family, because you're right. We wouldn't be who we are and where we are without them. I couldn't, you know, I'm embarking on a kind of a health journey for myself. I couldn't, I couldn't go to Portland, which is an hour and a half away to my doctor. I'd have to reschedule my whole day, but I know Jeff is good. I'm a text away. I know he can go do the job and we're fine. So it's your staff, your team are hugely important. Absolutely. And when you go from being like that solopreneur, or even when you and your fiance are together, you know, running the business to adding an additional outside person into that, it really is a beautiful thing to be able to really get back to yourself. Because when you are building a business, especially a home service business, and you're the technician, you are running your ass off. And even if you're working, say you're not working in the field, like Kim works in the field, but you're working in the office. I remember when I started my first septic, well, all of them, when I started them, like, let's be serious still now you work your like the craziest, stupidest hours. Like I will work 14 hours a day and not even blink an eye on it. But I'm so grateful that I'm able to do that building my own business rather than working that many hours working for someone else. You know what I mean? But it can really be something that you can get burned out on it. Just working in the office. Sometimes I'm like, I am just fucking done this week. Like I'm taking Friday. I'm done. like, Fridays are my podcast days now. Like everybody's been paid. We're all good. Like I have to take a day where I get to focus on the things that really light me up because when you work seven days a week in that, it will make you crazy. So how have you prioritized self-care and the things that you're doing with your health journey and still run a successful business? Um, it's been super, super hard, super challenging. If there is anything I can recommend to any woman is have a good therapist <laughs> that isn't your significant other because you can just bounce crap off of them. And like I said, I went through a really crazy divorce. I got really super depressed and uh, I lost myself. And, and I am a strong woman and I lost myself. I lost confidence in myself. So after my divorce, I, uh, I started playing ice hockey, which has become a huge, huge thing in my life that release, just going and smashing around a puck and beating on your a good friend for an hour is incredible. I have started getting massages. I've, um, I, I'm 43, I guess I'm going through perimetopause or whatever the heck it is now, getting my hormones checked, working on my joints. I've, I'm allergic to gluten now. So I'm finding out all these things that I'm exhausted and some of it's adrenal fatigue. So I'm learning these things about myself. And if I don't take care of me, I can't run the office. I can't get the guys out on jobs. So I need to start, which is hard, doing less of the physical labor. You know, I can go supervise, but I've got to start being more of the brains and being in the office and social media and still taking care of myself, getting my rest. I never was, I never put me first. And if anything I've learned in the past two or three years is I have to put me first. This is my baby and I will bend over backwards to make sure this business succeeds. But this business isn't anything without me because I am the CEO, the CFO, the accountant, the social media manager, head poop pumper, sometimes mechanic, even though I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. And the other day I found a loose spring. I'm like, I think there's something wrong, but I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> but I, if I don't take care of me, I can't make this baby grow. And I can't succeed, whether it be as a wife, as an owner of a business, as a hockey player, we need to prioritize us because we're nothing without everything is nothing without us. We are 
we have our supports and we need our supports, but we are the backbone. And if, if we don't get a massage every once in a while, if we don't get our nails painted, I have found this new love for travel. It, it has, it is such a good break for me and I look forward to it. And again, I know the guys have it while I'm gone. I'm a phone call away. I trust them. I can go to Europe and do me. So it's self-care is something I'm really learning is so important for all of us. Cause if we don't have it mentally and physically, we're nothing. We're, we're, we're shot. Yeah. I think a big a mindset shift for me was like, if you're not number one, you're nowhere on your list. Because it really doesn't matter. Because if I don't put myself first, and for so long, I went through a real shitty divorce too. Also very strong-willed woman. So it was like, and now I do everything for my kids. Like my kid's dad's completely out of the picture. I don't even know where the hell he is. So it's like, you get used to like, I'm the one in charge. I do everything. I'm this, I'm this. And you just like live your life that way. And you put the business ahead of you and you put the kids ahead of you and you put everything ahead of you. And then I just had a fucking mental breakdown. Like I, if I don't do something different and what I'd always looked at as self-care was like selfish because I never saw that modeled for me. Like my mom never took care of herself to this day. She doesn't take care of herself. Everybody else comes first and she's fucking miserable. She is. And I'm like, I realize I would come home and put my day on these sweet little babies that I'm trying to take care of. Or my new husband that was like, look, I wasn't the dick that broke your heart. So stop treating me like shit. And I was like, if I don't get my mind straight, I'm going to lose everything that I've been so strong for. And that was a breaking point for me to realize self-care is not selfish. I'm a selfish bitch if I don't take care of myself because this business needs me, these kids need me, and my husband needs me. And so if I don't take that time, they don't, they don't have what they need. And so really I'm, I'm, I'm hurting them by not taking care of myself. And it really is a perspective shift that, man, if you're listening to this, like you have to like be selfish. It's okay for it to feel like shit for a while. Yep. Cause I felt the same way. I'm like, you know what? This is being selfish. I am, I am here to give to my family and my business and it's not, it's you deserve to love you and take care of you. And it is such a huge step to take, but it is so important. And I mean, even seeing, even saying I need help. I am, I was horrible at saying I need help. Horrible. And I now, my fiance keeps a Snickers bar and a shot of tequila. We call it the Kim emergency kit. If I am having a meltdown, I take a shot of tequila and a Snickers. Usually a Pepsi comes in right afterwards. So it's just a load of sugar and alcohol. And I'm like, <laughs> but we kill it. The Kim emergency kit. Cause I get to a point where I'm done. <laughs> and He sees it. And I'm like, honey, get the kit. And he's like, Oh, you gotta have it. <laughs> you gotta have it. It's just, yeah, take a breath, take a breath. We live in such an incredible world and we are such incredible mamas and workers and business owners that we deserve happiness, health, and to be shined on to glitter. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you don't have to be, I think like for so long, I'd love to get your input on this too. Like busy was a badge of honor for me. And I'm like, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm doing this. I'm busy. And then my mother-in-law was like, well, you don't have to bring, you know, like food to the dinner or something. I know how busy you are. And that's the stuff that I love. Like feeding people is like my love language. Like I just want to take care of you, you know? And I'm like, how do you know I'm too busy? And then I like had to really sit with myself for a minute. And I was like, because you fucking tell her that all the time. I'm always saying how busy I was. And now I like refuse to say that. Like I refuse to say I'm stressed and I refuse to say I'm too busy uh, or I'm busy. Oh, I'm so busy today. Like, wow, I get to do a lot of things today. And really, even if I just look at my calendar and say that out loud, like your whole cortisol level and the adrenal fatigue that you end up putting yourself in being so cool and busy, it starts getting better. Have you experienced that? Oh yeah, totally. I, I just, I got to live in the moment. I can't, I can't look at the calendar and go, Oh crap. I'm so busy today. I'm, I'm screwed. You just, there it is. Deal with it. Handle it. Some of us like to live, live in a state of chaos. I think it keeps us mentally engaged and we feel like we're doing something and we have to help, but you know, yeah, you, you just want to be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'll figure it out. I'll get it done. It'll all get done. It'll all get taken care of at the end of the day. And if not, it gets done tomorrow. You know, and it again, it comes back to us. We can only do so much. Yes. 
Yes. If you look at your list, like I used to be the person that had the never ending to do list always. And it would be so stupid because then I was like, okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the top three things I'm going to work on today. Except my top three things were like build a website, start a new business and clean my house from top to bottom. And I'm going to get it all done before noon today. So again, I was never crossing anything off of my list because I had such a stupid list of stuff. So then I was like, okay, I'll just do one thing today. I'm going to build a website. That shit ain't getting done in a day either. So it's really about like my biggest thing now is what are my top three today and what can be done before noon. And it can't take me more than 30 minutes a piece to get them done. Because if I put those restraints on myself, I know that I can't give myself build a website. What are some tools that you use to prioritize your day and be able to stay in that kind of peaceful mindset that you're working so hard on? That is something I am still working on. I have yet to find a good way for me to organize myself. My son and my fiance call it a Kim trail because they can see where I started and then went from one job to the next, to the next, to the next, and I left it and it's still in the process. That, that is something I have to work on because I just, my office is a disaster, but I know where everything is. It's like I was saying, I, I'm in college part-time. I had an assignment due last night at midnight and I had no idea. I thought school started this coming Monday. So I had to park myself in front of the computer, field emergency calls. I went and did a couple pump outs myself. And that was my goal yesterday. I, so I, I jumped, you know, I knew that that was my one goal. I had to get that assignment done by midnight, but I still I was like, okay, I got to go pump. Jeff's out another job. This is an emergency. So I just, I kept coming back to it. So if, if I had to give an answer, I just have to keep coming back to it. And I have to be like, this is the one thing today that is getting done. It's hard trying to balance everything and find a certain thing to get done. You know, I've, I've really been on myself about my social media content because I haven't posted as much. I've got tons of content. I just haven't had the time, but I get home, dinner, housework, laundry, invoicing. I'm done. And, you know, fiance and I try to every night to sit down for an hour or two and watch TV together, dinner and TV, because that's so important too. But yeah, it's hard to, to focus on one thing when our lists are so long. And it seems like we crossed two or three off and there's five more on the other end. Yeah, it's it's really hard. <laughs> I think the best part about that is just being really, really kind to yourself and giving yourself some grace on those, you know, those days where like I had planned out to do some social media, except you know what? It's more important that I spend time with my husband right now. And it really is because at the end of the day, like my big thing is the five year rule. Which one of these is gonna make more of an impact in five years. And most of the time my family wins all the time, you know? So it's, you got to make that decision and just struggle. They make a mess. There's dirt everywhere. There's so much hair. I don't know what's happening this year, but they are all shedding. And I'm like, eh, guess the dust bunnies are just going to keep going across the floor today. They'll be there tomorrow. I, you know, it's the, the house cleaning will be there tomorrow. It, right now I'm going to watch TV and enjoy my kiddo and my fiance. And that's life. Yes. Yes. And I love what you said too about asking for help because any of these women, most of the women that listen to this podcast, both of us included, were very similar, big, bold personalities. And we're like, fuck it, we can do it. We'll do it ourselves. We can do it ourselves. Pay somebody 250 bucks to come clean my house. I can do it myself. I have house cleaners here right now. It's the most beautiful thing in the entire world. When I finally broke and actually hired them, I was like, I'm never going back. I will not eat for a week. So someone will come clean my house because it is the best thing. I don't spend my entire weekend doing that now. I have them come on Fridays. So I know I get to spend the weekend with my family and I'm not cleaning my house the whole time. And my big mindset shift with that was I'm supporting this other person's business too by allowing them to help me. And I think that's one of, been one of the biggest mindset shifts for me is if I allow someone to help me, they're allowed to give me the gifts that they are using to build a business or to do things for their family. And it's important that we try to not be doing it all by ourselves. So you said that you like to spend a couple hours with, with your man at the end of the night. You guys work together in this business. How do you keep the relationship together and this business relationship together? Or is the shit just commingled all the time? Do you sit at the dinner table and talk about pumping septic? Do you go on date night? Talk to me. So um, again, a little backstory here. We were a COVID relationship. We, we were Tinder and we were COVID. So there's a, right, a combination right there that we, how we met each other. 
that's where I met my husband was on Tinder. See, so it, it's it's meant to be, but um, we he is a, a realtor by trade full time. The the septic pumping is my thing. He helps me when he has time. Um, we have joked since we went to Lowe's and started stocking our trucks that they are our date nights. They are shitty date nights, whether it be um, covered in shit, shopping at Lowe's for a new shovel because I sat on one thinking I could open a lid and it broke under my butt. (laughs) Yeah, last night I was in probably three feet of pucker bushes, pricker bushes, whatever the hell you want to call them in someone's backyard trying to find a septic tank. And it was probably 6, 630. And all I hear is, hey, honey, you down there? And he had been real estating all day. And he was just making sure that I was alive. Because sometimes I take on adventures by myself that I probably shouldn't. But yeah, we we talk shit constantly. And, you know, it, it's kind of funny you mentioned this because we, in planning our wedding and all this stuff, I am very blessed to have met the man that I have. Because again, strong-willed woman, I put him through... I keep him on his toes constantly and we will come home and I'm covered or Jeff's covered. He's like, what did you two do to the guy? You know? And so we are able to talk about shit, real estate, kids, plan a wedding. And we might've in the three years we've been together had a disagreement and it really wasn't even work. And if it was work, it was, I'm stubborn. And I think once he got, I can't even say he got mad at me. He looked at me and he said, you are a saucy, stubborn woman. And I was like, excuse me, I'm a saucy, stubborn woman. And he's like, I don't know what to do with you. He goes, I, I, I love you. I love you for your stubbornness and I can't stop you. But you just put me on the edge sometimes with what you do. And we just, we talk about it. We have, we, we talk about it. Good, bad, or indifferent. We sit down at nine o'clock at night because I took an emergency call and he's like, yeah, I don't want you going by yourself. So it, I am blessed like beyond blessed that we can do this business together and laugh about it and, and it not be, but we can also look at each other and say, you know what, let's not answer the phone this weekend. We both need a day to just stop. And whether it be do yard work, I get a massage, you know, we can come to that conclusion together that we are both burnt and we just need, we have a house in Errol. We go up there and hide and just, you know what, there's plenty of other septic companies in town. If they really need it that bad, they can, you know, if it's one of our customers, I can call Jeff or I can say, hey, I'm coming back Sunday night. Can you wait? But yeah, it's we have found a very good meeting. And I think that is so important for me and my success and our success that I have a partner that stands behind me in my craziness and being like, I got to build this baby. And again, there are some pumpers in town that I don't say I don't get along with, but they either don't like me or it's the female thing or whatever. But um, I, I'm like, I make up names and there's one guy. He's an old timer. He's 87. He's from like an hour away. And right now he is my challenge for gallonage. And so when he comes in, we're like, fucking Jerry Anderson, fucking Jerry Anderson. I love Jerry Anderson, but he's beating me in gallons. So it's the running joke, fucking Jerry Anderson. But, you know, so it's, he supports me and that, that is my goal right now. So yeah. So having someone to support you is huge. Yeah, it really is. And I think too, for a lot of women that are really bold and go getters and doing stuff, a lot of times I know when we meet men, you know, they're like, Oh, wow. Like I love having a strong woman and I, I love an independent woman until they don't. You know, a lot of men I don't think can keep up with women like us. We, we are a threat. We are a challenge. But that's what he loves about me is that I am, I, you know, I, I was in Reykjavik and it was my first time traveling by myself. And he's like, how you doing? I'm like, honey, I'm lost, but I'm having fun. And he's like, oh my God, you're in another country. Oh my God. I, I called him, thank God he was one of my ice hockey tournaments and they wheeled me off the, the ice rink. And he's like, what'd you do? And the doctor's like, yeah, she broke her, her, her humorous head in two places. And I kept playing. I didn't stop. And he's like, what is wrong with you? I, he, you know, it, it takes a strong man to love a strong woman and we have a lot to offer, but we are intimidating. It's okay. We're intimidating, but that's what I think makes us so incredible is we are, we can be, we can be in a ball gown with makeup and diamonds and jewelry. And then the next day I am covered in head to toe and shit, literally, you know, and it's, you know, I've had friends say to me before, they're like, wow, we've never seen you dress up. 
I'm like, well, I can, <laughs> but I, I work. Yeah. Yes. I think it's beautiful that you're able to embrace both of those things and that you have a man in your life that embraces both of those things and loves both sides of you like that. Cause it is incredibly important. I'm sure you probably dated people that were like, Oh yeah, you're great up front. And then they were like, yeah, you need to like chill out. You need you a know? volume. And I'm like, a z- oh. zone at whatever, some, something to just, that's like the worst <laughs> thing ever to me. Like, don't tell me to calm down and don't tell me to slow down. Cause I will run your ass over. <laughs> I got shit to do, you know? So I think it is such a blessing. I have the same, like such a good guy that just many times is like, oh, here she goes again. Like even sometimes he's like, can we just like, we went to the wastewater show two years ago. We didn't get to go this last year because we had something else going on. But two years ago when we went, we were going through like all of the restroom trailers, you know, and I was like, we need these. They're building all those places out here for these weddings and they don't have stuff because they're all on septic and they won't let them put new septics in. I'm like, they're going to need these. This needs to be an extension of stuff. I'm like talking pricing with this guy. Like we're going through all this stuff. And my husband's like pulls me aside and he's like, nothing else this year. You promise nothing else this year. Cause I used to have a junk removal company. I had the septic company. I was running this podcast, doing stuff, helping other people. He's like, I would like to see my wife at some point here. So I think it is important that we remember, like we made a commitment to them to, to spend time with them and to do those things. And although we're out chasing big goals, big dreams, all these things, they still want to be a part of that. They still want to know that there are knight in shining armor and there is a very beautiful thing of being able to, I know we have to wear kind of a masculinity being in this industry, even more so than just being like a woman in a boardroom somewhere, you know, you've really got to be able to tunnel on the way home from work or stepping out of your office and take it off a little bit and be able to be that soft person for them too, because they need that. Just, we definitely need that. I notice a lot of that more like my husband's been out on the pump truck and it's almost like he wakes up with a new pep in his step of like going to work, you know, like he goes really early where before, like he got me clients. So they wouldn't even start till like eight o'clock in the morning, but there's like this renewed masculinity about him. That's like, I'm going to do the shit, you know? And I'm like this, I love this. I love, and I'll stay here and I'll cook dinner and I'll I'll take care of you when you get home. And that's kind of a flip of what our relationship has ever been before. So it's been a really cool thing to see how that is. And the confidence that comes out in these men when we're able to still put them up there as our Kings is a really cool thing. And that does not make you any less of a woman to do that. I think it makes you more. How do you feel about that? Oh, I totally agree. I mean, he's, like I said, he's a real estate agent. So most days he's, you know, in his nice clothes and button down shirt. The days he goes out and pumps for me, he's like, oh, I got this done today. And I found this tank and I took this picture and should have seen this outlet baffle. It was on the ground. And yeah, he, he, it, it gives him a sense of changing up his day. He's, he's getting dirty. He's helping me. You know what I mean? And that he, yeah. And it just, I like seeing him smile. We joke that he gets employee of the month sometimes because <laughs> he comes in and helps. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, you gotta, they, they need, even though we are strong, they need to be our kings and, and feel loved and cherished. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a really hard balance. I think especially in the world that we're in right now, it's so hard finding that balance. And we are in a men's world and we kind of have to put our coveralls on a little differently sometimes because we're not going into the boardroom with our heels and parachutes. It's a really weird balance that I think is growing, but I still think we're a little stuck in the 1950s or as far as us women being out there doing these things and not only just doing the actual labor, but then doing the office stuff too. That's a dynamic. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of shit to do. <laughs> yes, it really is. You know, and it's a lot, a lot, you know, people joke, they're like, you got a shitty job. I'm like, you have no idea what a shitty job I have. My day's been shitty. My life is shitty. I'm covered in shit. And they're just, they're laughing. Cause it's like, I think they expect us to be miserable. I think. And we're not, we're Jeff and I are laughing and throwing things at each other. You know, we've got hooks that we're lassoing. We're like, yeah. 
have fun with it. Life is too short. <laughs> yes, it is. And that is something that I am so incredibly passionate about is really talking about the trades as if it's not a, oh, you fucked up and didn't go to college or you made a mistake in your life. So now you got to go work at the septic business or now you got to go be a plumber or doing something else. There is such a shortage in people working in this. I have my business. We do the pumping and service side stuff, but we have an install team too. There is so much business and I don't have enough people to go do it. And it is insane. And I'm like, my, my pump truck driver, Keith, he made just under six figures last year. Like people can make incredibly good money in this industry. If you come in, bring your passion and go after it and help people. It is such a labor of love to work in the home service industry. I truly believe it is. And a lot of times people will say, well, there's already a bunch of septic companies. There's already a bunch of plumbers. There's already a bunch. How do you stand out? Because for me, my competition isn't the other three septic companies that are like right down the road from me. My competition is how I showed up yesterday. And how the fuck am I going to beat that today? And if you keep watching this way, you're going to fucking crash because you should be looking this way and you should be paying attention to the things that you can control, which is what is happening inside of your business and hiring good people to do that. And there's so much opportunity for people. So I love to be part of the community, to talk about this, get in front of people and say, look, this is a viable option for kids that don't want to just waste a half a million dollars going to college to fucking party. Like, let's start making some money and let me show you how you can do this. Is there ways that you get involved in your community being able to bring the trades to notice for people as an ethical and awesome place to work? You know, I, I had a chance to do a truck, touch a truck. Um, unfortunately, I was busy that day. I didn't get to do it. What I've just been doing is just getting involved in general. You know, my son was on the football team. So we've, you know, we sponsor the football team and we've become a lot of friends with the parents. And I find the more that I get involved with different organizations, I'm teaching as I go. Or, hey, does your kid want a job? Come work here. Or just the conversation of septic being involved in the community. It, there's so much out there. And I, if anybody wants to come ride with us for a day, I'm like, yeah, definitely come do it. Um, but most people think it's a shitty job and they really don't want to do it. You know, a question I get asked a lot, cause I am in college part-time. Why are you bothering? Why are you going to college part-time? It is a goal I've had since I was 19 to get my degree. Do I need it? Nope. I've got this business, but it's something I want. And I think it just makes me a smarter businesswoman to have a background in something. You know what I mean? I don't need it. It's something I want. I, it's work here is the same way people are like, well, why don't you get into pump installations? And I don't have time and there's not enough workers. There really isn't. And the people that I recommend to do the installs and the plumbing work, they're three or four months out. There's just not enough help. And I, and I don't know what it is because no one really wants to do the blue collar work, the real work. It's hard to find anybody. My son, he worked with me for a summer and I actually fired him. I fired my kid. He got out of the truck one day and I said, dude, go home. I can't do this today. He, he was playing on his phone. He, you know, he'd have one glove on and I already have three hoses dragged. And, you know, so he's not working for us right now. Would it be an awesome job? He's 18. He could get in here now, learn. And in 10 years, this could be his. And he doesn't want it right now. So we'll see. I don't know. I, it'd be a perfect avenue for him. It's trucks. It's a good income. It's pretty much here. We get winters off. I don't know about you guys because we get so cold. January, February, March, we really don't have work. I mean, we might do five a week, maybe, but it's our slow season. So you kind of, he likes snowmobiling. You can go snowmobiling. You can have some time off. It's, it's not a bad gig. No, it's not. And something I found very interesting, I was talking to someone because we're really involved with like our chamber of commerce in the cities that we service. And I was having a conversation with them because they do a program where like high school kids can come in and learn kind of like what, what you do for a business. And I love being part of that. I think it's really cool. But it's not the high school kids that you want to be talking to because at this point, they've kind of made their mind up about how they feel about things. It's kind of like those like fourth graders to seventh graders that it's like, hey, you know, like this is something that would be really awesome to talk about. Yeah, there is a company in town. They have, they're a local family. 
They have grown from just concrete to foundations. They've got a tree division now. Like they have so many divisions and they actually go to the high school juniors and they bring them in for summer work. And it's, it's incredible what they're doing because they're kind of getting these kids ready for when they graduate, they might already have a full-time employee. It's a pretty cool gig that they've started. So I think it's going to come here more. We're slow here in New England. I hate to say that on a lot of things. We, we seem to do some stuff last. I don't know. It's even septics. You know, the state's kind of freaking out because we are having a failure rate that's going through the roof. No one's serviced their tanks in 10 years. So it's, things are falling apart. So we're, we're getting there. And again, that's why I like the educational part of it and me being able to talk to people and explain to them why it's so important. Absolutely. Because it takes, it really does take a different approach to how you perform services when you go out to these places. And I think that's something just to kind of bring the whole conversation around it that women are really good at. You're paying attention to more of the details of stuff. It's not about just going and pumping the septic tank when I go there, ever. My big thing that I always tell my technicians is you're going to your mama's house. How would you like someone to treat her? That's how, like, I, I will never forget. I had a guy who's so incredible. His name was Vinny. And he was working at my junk removal company. And he pulled this older lady's trash can back up to her house and put it away for her because the trash man was there while they were loading up the trailer. And she called and like just raved. Like she left us reviews in three different places. Like just because Vinny didn't have a damn thing to do with the junk removal, hold her garbage can up there. I'm like, my biggest thing is always like, what's the one extra thing you can do while you're there? That will set you apart. That will totally build a business in and of itself because you did one extra thing. So like you said, going to the door and saying, hey, would you like to come out and I can show you how this works? You know, that is something that is always offered with our service because so many people, they're like, they don't even know where the hell the tank is. And it was just pumped two years ago because they didn't go out. They didn't pay attention. The guy came out. He did the thing. You know, sometimes they're pumping a septic tank out of sewer line clean outs. They've pumped it here many times. And you're like, no, they didn't do shit. They just took your money and laughed. And so it's really important that you're like validating your service and that you're providing that education. And even if you can get involved in the community at a level where you can go provide educational resources, we do that for real estate offices. We go in to the office and teach them about septic systems because they don't know anything. And they always wait till the last second to get them inspected. And then they fail because they flush inside, but there's a goddamn tree living inside of the septic tank. And they don't understand why, but it's just because there's no education around that. So I think that's something that women do a little bit better in this industry. The ones that have women running them, you can see the difference. Oh yeah. This past spring, I went to all the real estate offices. Usually I visit them in the spring with some cookies and some cupcakes or something yummy. Our, our push this year to get the real estate agents to understand it. I'm like, you know, you are, you are selling their home from them. When they move out, they are taking their clothes. They're taking their furniture. They're taking everything that's theirs. I'm like, they need to take their shit. And a couple of them were like, oh my God, what are you talking about? I'm like, take their shit. That's their shit in the septic tank. Who knows how long it's been in there. Let's let the young 20 year old couple that's coming in brand new that has no idea start with a fresh septic tank. So they know how it works. And I've got a bunch of real estate agents now that call me like, hey, Kim, come get someone's shit. They're moving out. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you're excited about it. I'm like, yeah. So it's, 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 it's awesome. It's finding catchy, catchy things. You know, um, we advertise in our local paper and I didn't think they were going to let us do this. But our ad this year was get, are you on our shit list? Be on the best shit list in town. And we take the I and just make it an asterisk. People love that. And it's, it's a representation of our personality that's in the business. We're not dry. We're not angry. We're not grumpy. We are happy, having fun, and we want your shit. <laughs> yes, and you have to do cool things like that. Our slogan is, we do epic shit. But that is our value statement, too, because E is for education. P is for people. I is integrity. And it's all over. It's on our website everywhere my guys have that on their shirts and everywhere we go like they just keep i package them up and put them in the pump truck people ask for a shirt all the time like it's, it's always people at the gas station like every time i go to the gas station when i have my shirt on they're like oh, that's so funny you know like we give out stickers we got all kinds of stuff 
oh yeah, we do the same thing. Cause they're like, oh my God, your shirt says shit. I'm like, it does. My truck says shit. And like, we'll be at Irving getting gas and people are taking pictures of the truck. I'm like, that's epic. That's awesome. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. The, that's the stuff. And when you're in industries like this, you've got to be able to have fun with the branding and the marketing and being able to m- do something that is so that people remember it. Like my junk removal company, our slogan was, uh, was show us your junk. And that was our hashtag for everything. And people would laugh all the time. They're like, how many dick pics do you get? And we're like, <laughs> we seriously got none the whole entire time. But what a cool, like, like even like a billboard, like people are going to stop and look at this. Like there was an AC company and it had this really beautiful, like books and blonde on there. And it was like, your wife is hot, like fix your air conditioning system. And everybody took pictures of this, posted it all over the place. And I'm like, that's why you don't put your phone number on shit. All you got to do is like, we do epic shit. And people are like, oh my gosh, that's so great. You got to have fun with this. I love what you've been able to do with your branding stuff. We'll put everything in the show notes for everything for Turner Septic so that everybody can see it because it really is those cool things that are going to get people to remember you. Our phone number is is 603-733-8667, but it's actually 603-P tons. You've got to be creative with it. You got to have fun. (laughs) That's so awesome. And little things like that, like the going the extra mile, like doing the one extra little thing. Like it's never crowded there because people don't want to take the time to do it. And it truly is the difference that will separate you from everyone else. It doesn't like when people say, Oh, well, my pricing is really competitive. It's less than I'm like, well, you're dumb because now you're just working harder for the same amount of money. Your competitive nature needs to be the value that you provide to your customers. And when you're focused on your value and not what everybody else is doing, I truly feel like you can't lose because you're going to attract the best people to come in and work for you, which single-handedly there is going to help you build the best business in town. Yeah. And don't be afraid to step out of the box. It's scary. Those lines are there. They've put them there for a reason, but step over those lines. Don't be afraid of it because you don't know what that other side could hold. It could be a whole nother awesome adventure that no one has tried. And you could succeed beyond your wildest dreams. So yeah, don't be afraid to take that leap and try it because, okay, you fall, you, you try again. So awesome. So awesome. Kim, thank you so much for this conversation. We've been recording way longer than I said we were going to. I knew that was going to happen. I know. <laughs> it's okay. I knew that was going to happen. So in closing here, I love everything that you're doing. I want to commend you for being that badass woman that is out there setting an example for other women to see. And I always get super emotional about that because what our kids see us do, even though your son's like, you know, not, not really into it right now, he's still watching his mama go out there and kick ass every day. And I promise you that's going to pay off sooner or later, even if it ends up being to the point that someday he finds himself a little lady and he's like, you don't hold a candle to my mama because you are lazy and you're not doing anything. You know what I mean? Like really setting that example or other women in your community that see you standing up for something you really believe in and working really hard. Those girls aren't going to ever see the hardships that we saw because of women like you that step up and do those hard things. So thank you for being an example for that. It's really, really awesome. Um, In closing, I always ask everyone, if you were writing a book and it was titled Ladies Kicking Ass and you were in charge of chapter 12, what would your chapter be called? And what does the phrase ladies kick and ass mean to you? Wow. What would my chapter be called? Probably something pick you first and kick ass. Be a kick ass woman. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be afraid of. Pick you first and ride that roller coaster because there's so much we can do that so many people say we can't and like I said you're gonna fall but jump on the ride and go for it and put you first be up front in that roller coaster and just see where it goes yes 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 because that adventure will take you places that you never even dreamed were possible yep exactly and it's just gonna lead to better chapters and an even better story 
Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. Thank you so much, Kim. I'm so appreciative of you. I truly feel like I finally found my sister in this industry and now we can just work together and bounce shit off of each other. So I'm really looking forward to staying in connection with you and we can help each other build badass businesses Hell together. Yeah. Let's take over the <laughs> shitty world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being part of the Ladies Kickin' Ass community. Cheers to all you badass women out there. Keep rocking your power, igniting your fire, and making waves in the service industry. If you loved today's episode, please do me a quick favor. Take a screenshot, post it, and tag us at Ladies Kickin' Ass. Be sure to include the link to your favorite episode. Your support in spreading the word means the world to us as we aim to empower even more women. Hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more kick-ass episodes. And don't forget, a five-star review is the ultimate high five. Connect with us on social media. All the links are in the show notes. Thank you for being part of our tribe. Now go kick some serious ass, lady.